people to come and be here so much. I wanted all of my family to be able to be here with us this week, uh, you know, where we could have, where I could have showed them off. <laughs> oh, my grandchildren, anyway, they're all gifted, and I said, you know, you're going to have to just make plans to come at Christmas, and and uh, so all of my, my grands can get up and sing and play instruments and do the music and lead us in worship. I, I don't know if that will happen, but... We'll, let, we'll have our chord with us Tuesday, and we haven't seen him for almost two years, and and uh, he'll be coming from Missouri, so I'm excited about him being with us and being a part of the Thanksgiving this week. I want to preach today on our faith under fire. Faith under fire. Now, I can just tell you right up front that I can preach this good this morning. Because remember when I stood the pulpit and preached to you about, are you up for the challenge? I didn't really know that I would be an onslaught from the enemy like I have. And there has been faith under fire. And there's been no let up. But I'm up for the challenge. I might be weak this morning, but I'm up for the challenge. And I'm determined that God is going to do what he wants to do in this house. And God's going to minister to people and cause us to grow and multiply and see God do what he desires to do. Amen? Yeah. Let's give him praise right here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. In Luke chapter 7, I want to begin reading in verse 18. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, are thy he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were coming to him, they said, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Are thy he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities, and plagues, and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to the, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Faith under fire. Lord, we ask you for that special heavy anointing. That anointing God that makes preaching so easy and so effective. God that gives Lord the freedom and the liberty and, and the challenging, oh God, of your word. We understand, God, that you are a powerful God. You are not limited by our thinking or by anything that we're going on in our lives, God. You are God. You always have been and always will be. And Lord, in the midst of the fire, our faith can be exercised in you. Regardless of what the situation is, help us to look today to you and understand we can live. Thank you, Lord, for this precious congregation of people. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to be back in the pulpit. Thank you, God, that you have touched my body. And I believe that I'm going to receive total, total healing, God, in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to receive that strength. And God, that you're going to touch us afresh and anew today. Oh, my God, I just love you so much. And thank you for all the things you brought us through. And greater victories are yet to come. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated today. You know, all you have to do is to begin in the book of Genesis. And you will find that from Genesis to Revelation, there were people that were tested by fire. I mean, the book of Daniel talks about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You, you would have thought that Daniel, standing in the midst of the kingdom, that he would not have let his faith waver. In fact, the Bible says that Daniel did not bow a knee to the king. He stayed steadfast, even tried in the faith. And though he knew and understood that God was God, there are times in our lives, and it always will happen. If it hadn't happened to you yet, it will happen. 
that there will be a trying of your faith. Uh, I mean, if you're a young Christian, maybe you won't face the trials that some older warriors have faced. You, you know, I've said to you over and over, I'm 68, I've been serving God for 60 years. And, and I have to tell you that my faith is stronger now than it was when I received Him at the age of eight. Why? Because I've been through the fires and through the trials, and I know that God has been a faithful God. And even when our faith has been tested in the strongest furnace of fire, God has been there. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ask them if God was not in the midst of the fire. In fact, the Word of God said, didn't we throw three men in there? And they said, yes, but he said, I see four men up walking around the Son of God came in to the fire where they were at. Oh, our testing of our faith will be in the fires. You know why? Because it grows us up. It matures us. But in the book of Genesis you find Abraham. His faith was tested in the fires. God said, I'll make of you a great nation. God said, I will give you a son. And the faith that was tested in Abraham proved to me that God was God. Yeah. You remember that, don't you? When he was 100 years old and Sarah was 95 and when it was past the age of conceiving, uh, nothing is too old for God to heal and to restore. And even when your faith is tried, God comes on the scene. Uh, I mean, when you just read the Word of God, you study it out, one passage after the other talks about the fires uh, that the old saints of God went through. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is the Hall of Fame uh, of those that was tested in the fires but stood in the faith. It said they had their sons and daughters sawed asunder. They went through all kinds of things, but their faith stood the test. Amen? It is in the fire that our faith is tested, but faith under fire will bring us through. Without faith, the Bible said it is impossible to please God. Now, if you're trying to get something from God, forget it if you don't have faith. Because what happens is doubt counsels our faith. Oh, thank you, Lord. I don't want to get in a hurry here, but I do feel that you have to forgive me because it's been three weeks since I preached, so you might be here longer than you think today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm coming to John because when we read about John, the Word of God said that John the Baptist was, Jesus said that he was the greatest among all women and all men that lived. Uh, but go back to John when he was in the womb of Elizabeth. I, I want to talk about that because there's Mary, she's expecting Jesus. And Mary goes to tell the good news that, that the Savior, the Savior is in her womb. And when she meets Elizabeth, the Bible said that John leaped in her womb. Uh, he didn't understand it right then, but he had just met the Son of God. I mean, he knew that, but then go fast forward and John the Baptist is the one that came preaching in the wilderness. Uh, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Uh, uh, John the Baptist was the one that baptized Jesus in the river and the Holy Ghost came down and set upon him and the Spirit spoke and God spoke and John the Baptist saw Jesus in all of his glory and he said behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world I'm trying to get you to understand that no matter how much faith you've got in God there are just sometimes the devil says you don't have it but you do have it you do have it it might be stuck down in there, but you got it. Because if you just remember how you met him, how you came to him, what he'd done to you when you saw him. I mean, every man has to have an experience of seeing him. And if you haven't seen him for yourself, you can't understand why we get so excited. Now, somebody that's seen God and has transformed your life, you should be excited. And nobody ought to say you're a chap. Because if your life was the old man and the new man, you should be excited. Amen? Just think about that. I was eight and there wasn't no way in the world that I had committed no sins. And eight, even though I was born into sin, I needed a savior. But just think about people that are bound in drugs and alcohol and prostitution and 
homosexuality and lesbianism and they come to God and they get delivered and they're healed. They'll give out a shout that they saw him as behold the Lamb of God. He's taken away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. John the Baptist is preaching repentance and Herod is wise to say we want his head. You know, I'm, I'm amazed at people that want the head of the prophet cut off. Oh, hey, they didn't just stop there in, in the Old Testament Amen. or the New Testament. If you've got somebody preaching the word of God in the church, oh, God. and they can't handle it, they want your head cut off. Oh, yeah. oh, How do they do that? They try to silence you. That's right. They try to come up against you, and you have to be tested in your faith. That's right. And you have to know that God has called you to a place. Yeah. That no matter what the devil tries to do, and you're being tested under the fire, God will bring you through the fire. I said God will bring you through the fire. I want to talk about John because John preaches repentance, repentance, repentance. And don't you know that that adulterous relationship that was going on the king's palace. That she said, I am sick and tired of hearing this man say, repent. I could bring that on down to the church. People are tired of hearing people say repent. But I tell you the truth, we are under fire. Yes. And the church hasn't seen any persecution yet. Oh, like we're going to see. So I just want to share with you right now, if you can't stand in the fire you're in now, what are you going to do when they stand in your face and say you either take life or death? When they tell you you can't, you say, I can. We don't believe that. We don't believe that we're at the hour of the church. Where our faith is going to be tested more than it's ever been tested before. I love that passage of scripture, but it always convicts me. It convicts me. When it says, what are you going to do if you're weary with the horsemen? What are you going to do at the swelling of the joy? You know what that means? If you're tired and worn out from a little fatigue of the enemy and little things get you down, what are you going to do when the swelling of the Jordan overflows you? When death, sickness, finances, everything falls out, what are you going to do? I'm going to still trust God. I tried as sick as I was in the hospital to try to minister to nurses that came in. <laughs> and they would smile and they'd say, is your husband the pastor because he'd come in the room, you know? And I'd say, no, he wants to be, but I'm the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd cut up with them and they'd say, really, are you the pastor? And I'd say, yes, I am the pastor. Well, we don't know about women pastors. I said, well, you need to come try us out. I mean, just come check us out. You know, it's all about God anyway. Amen? Amen. But I, I met this Vietnamese nurse she was an RN, and, and it was almost like a connection was made there, and, and she was standing at the bed, and uh, she was talking to me, and she said, isn't it amazing how memories just flood our mind? And uh, uh, she was talking about the rice that they ate. Uh, she said, you know, I, I, when I was growing up, I hated rice, and I still don't like it too much now, but in Vietnam, she said that all we had was rice, and we put a little sugar on it and make it taste good. And so she started crying, standing in the bed. And I said, yeah, there's something about memories. And I said, do you, do you know the Lord? And she said, yes, I'm a Christian. I said, well, I just want to share that with you because, you know, you don't meet many nurses that will hang around very long. Now, I've got two of you that would hang with me to through thick and thin. You know, I know that. But I'm just saying that there are people that you just feel a connection to. And when I started saying to her, God loves you, and she started crying, and she said, oh, for the old homeland, that I could see my family, that I could be where they're at. And I said, well, you might not can now, but if you'll just keep living for the Lord, oh, yes. one day you will be able to. <laughs> see, there's something about witnessing. The people, that's what John the Baptist did. He continually said, repent, repent, repent. Yeah. And, and finally, uh, the king's uh, mistress finally said, can't handle that voice any longer. I want my daughter to dance before the king. And when he asked, what can I give? I want John the Baptist head. Yeah. 
Now understand, John is in prison. He has saw the glory of God. He saw the Son of God. He saw the Lamb of God. He saw miracles happen. He saw manifestation of the Spirit. And I'm leading up to this. You can be in the presence of God in the house of the Lord and see miracles and signs and wonders. And you can still let your faith go down to the bottom. But God has not let you down. He's right there. He'll be there always. In all of it, He's and when your faith is under fire, ah, God will be God. Yeah. And so John is having one of those discouraging moments yeah. when he says, I'm in prison and they're going to kill me. Yeah. Would you please go ask him, uh, is he the one? My God. Or do we look for another? My God. Now you should say amen because uh, you've been right there. Yes, my God. Maybe you didn't say go ask him if he's the one you said. Uh, I wonder if God really is God. Yeah. I wonder, God, if you know where I'm at. Yeah. God, did you even hear my prayer? God, do you even understand what I'm going through? And John needed to hear yes. that he was Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Mm. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I want to speak to a person right here. And that God said you're under a heavy attack right now. And that you're loaded down with this thing. God said don't mistake the fire for my leaving you. I'm right there. I'll bring you through this. I'll give you the victory. Even though you're in the fire, stand still and let God be God. Uh, just stand still and let God be God. You can look at the circumstances and get overwhelmed in it. And you can be like, John, is he really God? Is it really? Is he really the Son of God? Or do I need to go look for somebody else to help me solve my problems? I, I, I can attest to this. You can too. That there's been times when you've been in the fire and wonder, God, do you really care about me? Do you even think about where I'm at, God? Uh, and, and I'm just speaking to somebody here in this congregation. Don't let the weight of that fire get you to lose sight of the faith in Him. Because of this God can walk on water. And He can speak to the winds and the waves and they have to obey. If God can heal the blinded eyes, and the deaf ears. And the dead get up and walk. And I think he can take care of you and I. In our, in our faith. When our faith is under fire. Mm, then we must be strong. You know I, I tried to listen to the spirit. Because uh, there's so many ways to go with this message. Faith in the fire. Faith under the fire. Faith through the fire. I mean. You know, if you want to go faith in fire, just go go back to the Old Testament and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love what they said. King, we're not bowing. We're not bowing. I, I think it's time for the church to say, yeah, we're not bowing. We may be in the fire, but we're not bowing. We're not bowing. We're not bowing. I'm going to say one more time. We're not bowing, devil. We're in the fire, all right, devil, but we're not bowing. <laughs> and then watch God walk you through the fire. Oh yeah. Just watch God walk in the fire. I mean if our eyes could see that right now. Spiritually. Fire walker. Those Haitian nations that people walk on fires of gold, they ain't got nothing on God. I mean God created it all walk right before they ever knew what it was. I mean, he'll walk right on the fire, through the fire, and right on out. He'll walk through the floods. And they'll not overtake you. Oh, God. Oh, God, I feel your presence, Lord. Faith in the fire. Faith in the fire. Faith is more than just saying, I got it. And I've had people say that to me. I got it. I don't know how you can't have it. Well, go through about half what I've gone through, and you probably won't have too much faith in you. 
Because I was laid in the bed in the hospital room saying, God, what is this all about? Why am I here? I mean, God, now I, don't, I, I just can't stand this because when last Thursday came and I woke up from bronchitis and gout and woke up saying, oh dear God, not again. I knew it immediately. And I started crying and Brother Rasmus said, what are you crying for? I said, because I can't stand the thought of going through this again. And going to the hospital. And by the time I got there, my blood pressure was 233. Over 135, I was in so much pain. <laughs> they just put me right on up in there, and I just started crying. I said, dear God, here I go again. I want to just tell you, I'm sick and tired of doctors. And I'm tired of hospitals. I'm, I'm glad to help me, but I'm sick of it. And I don't want y'all to be sick, but I don't want no more sick than no more hospitals. Amen. And they smile when they stick you. <laughs> then your veins burst and roll. And I'm saying, don't do it again, please. Don't do it again. No, we got to. I'm just saying, I was just weeping in the hospital and saying, God, why have I got to go through this again? And then you turn on the television, and Tommy Bates. Right out your storm, God's right there with you. I'm saying, dear God of all songs, hadn't heard it in years. Remember me saying that from the pulpit that I hadn't heard that song in years, and wouldn't of all songs that is God just saying, daughter, just ride out your storm. I'm right there with you. It's all right. Everything's good. God will do that. When your faith is down in the bottom, God said, I'm in the fire with you. Just let your faith soar. Go like the eagles to the mountain because I am there. Amen. Yeah, somebody was just praising right here. Praise him, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. 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 What did Jesus say? He said, go, go your way and tell John these things. In other words, John, be reminded that I open the blinded eyes. I've opened the deaf ears. What are you doing is building John's faith in him. And John, I'm sure, just shook his head and said, okay, I'm all right. That's what you do when God is in the fire with you. The book that I wrote, years, I, I kept journals and thinking that, you know, the journals is what I keep them and just kept them for my own purposes. But one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, you're going to write a book and you're going to call it Through the Fires, God. And the scripture you use is Isaiah 43. And all my grandchildren, of course, you know, Nancy wrote a book and she's going to be New York. Number one, I guess so. <laughs> and I laughed and said, I agree. I think we got past 2,000 books. I didn't make New York bestseller. But the Lord said, when I was writing that book, he said, when people read the book, they'll be literally deli delivered and healed from all kinds of addictions and storms in their life. It's a story, really, not half has been told, of the things that I went through in my life that God gave us the victory. I was ministering again to my brother, Glenn, and, and with all his callings and giftings on his life, he was sitting in a drunken stupor. And I'm saying to him, Glenn, you know what the right thing is to do? When are you going to do it? When, when are you going to do it? You know what the last thing my mom said to me when we were in the room when she died? She said, Ann, will you be sure that you take care of Vicki and keep on praying for Glenn? Now, mom had done gone through so much with Glenn in the prison for eight years or a little over, going to see him every Sunday and every time the doors was open. And she, her heart was, Take care of Vicky 
And I said, Mama, I'll do the best I can, but in the ultimate end, nobody can take care of somebody else except God. I mean, it's a heavy, weighty thing when you're trying to take care of somebody else. But Vicki has been reminded over and over, even in a mental institution, that God's God. And through the fires, God, that book, brought revelation to people as they prayed and as they read the story of my life. If you would have told me that I was, and Brother Darrell thought when I was saying this, that he, I was cutting up, but seriously, I, I, I took an elf in school just so that I didn't have to get up before anybody because I was so bashful. Now, I know you can't believe that now. <laughs> I mean, I know that. But what that is is the Lord. That's, right. that, that's the Lord. But I took an elf in school to keep from getting up because they said, Tell, do a thesis on what was your greatest day in your life. Well, coming from the background with my dad being with a deep anger and throwing me across the room and pulling my hair and things of that nature, it wasn't about my childhood. It was that when I met him, oh, yeah. when I met him at the age of eight, that was the greatest day of my life. And I shared that with high schoolers and started sharing about Jesus when he came into my life and they started laughing. And I remember crying and laying the paper down and running out of the classroom. But did you know that some of those same people right now that were in my school are on my Facebook page? You know what they say? I was not shocked when I found out you were a minister. <laughs> really? Because we saw something in you that was different. Can you help me? So you may be tested in the fire. But if you'll keep your faith, God will use you to touch someone else. Amen? Amen? That's why you can go through the fires and know that God is there. How you go through the fires, you've been there. Some of you have been there. Some of you have had children in prison like mine. Some, some of you have gone through all kinds of things. But if it hadn't been for your faith in God, you wouldn't be standing here. Amen. You wouldn't be sitting in this congregation. But it is by the faith of God Amen. that he brings us out. Yeah. And God reminds us as he did to John the Baptist. Hey, you ain't got to look nowhere else. I am. Yeah. I am that I am. Yeah. I, I'm the one you're looking for. I, I'm the one you're hungry for. Yeah. So just let me touch you. Yeah. Faith in fire means that no matter how hot the fire is, I'm able to come through it. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. I can come through it. Faith in fire means no matter how bad it looks, God is in the fire. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I just want to encourage you today. Just be encouraged. God is in the fire and He'll take care of it all. Amen. Some of you, I've, I've watched you since I've been here for almost eight months now. Some of you have gone through such devastation and things that you just don't understand why. But you just keep on pushing. Oh, yes. You know what that tells me? You've got a relationship with God yes. and that you're standing firm. Yes. And boy, if you plant a church, you want people that are warriors. Yes. That know how to stand in the fire yes. and stay in the faith yes. and keep on trusting God. And I'm going to declare this over this house. The devil has had his way long enough over your families. And I'm believing that God, this is our time for our children and grandchildren and husbands and wives to be delivered and to be healed by the power of God. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Take just a moment and go back in your mind when you met the Lord. And what has he done for you since you gave your heart to him? What kind of fires have you come through? Just think about that for a moment. 
Think about the deaths in your family that God gave you strength to get over. Think about the sicknesses that God gave you faith to get over. Think about financial difficulties that God provided in the midst of the fires. Think about God bringing home somebody you've prayed for for a long time and you see them walking in the door and victory is on their life. Just think about that for a moment. Then you will give God praise and you'll know your faith brought you through the fires. Now I can't tell you how much I am blessed by the Lord today to be able to even stand up today in this pulpit. Because I haven't been able to do nothing but lay. Oh, lay. Uh, from the weakness of the antibiotics are so strong. But I decided this morning I wasn't taking the antibiotics so I could have more strength to preach. <laughs> so I'll finish it up today and tomorrow, but right now I needed to I needed to have sleep to preach. If your faith is under fire, look to God. Be strengthened in his presence and know that he's God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I believe we haven't seen anything yet of what God's going to do in this house. Amen. I mean, you can get your eyes, uh, you can get your eyes focused in on who's not here. And as a pastor, I'm always looking at my sheep. Where are they at? Brother Bradley will tell you he's over there. Every time he'd come home, I'd say I'd start naming everybody, and and I'd say, were they there? Were they there? Were they? <laughs> and he'd say, Yeah, I think so. I I don't know if I really look to see. See, the difference is that the shepherd is looking over the sheep. And I want your faith to be built in the Lord. Don't look at your circumstances. If you do that, you're going to drown. Don't. Don't. The warden called us Friday and he said, you know, I'm returning your call about Jeffrey and he said, I, I don't know if you know or not, but this is Five times, yeah, we knew it, five times in the last two months he's been in an outside hospital. Now in my sickness, I was just so trembling inside because, no, I don't know what's wrong with him. They won't tell you what's wrong with him. They've done MRIs and they've done all this stuff and I still don't know what's wrong with him. And so as a mom, I just started crying and I said, God, you understand the heart because my heart is at the prison with my son, and I don't know what's wrong with him. And God, you understand the brokenness, so help me, God, to release it into your presence. You know, I felt that, I felt that overwhelming jerking inside like the devil was trying to just cause me to go back to a study I was at one time and I was just almost like a nervous breakdown. But then I just felt the sweet peace of the Lord. And, and I still don't know what's wrong with me. And I still don't know what the situations are, but I know that God does. Yes. And God reminded me. He said, remember I spoke to you one night, and I said, you can't go where I can go, and there's no door that I can't go through. Oh, yes. There's no door I can't go through. And nothing can be shut that I can't go into. So God, welcome into the prison and touch our son. Yes. He's in isolation, and I don't know what that means. But I know God does. And our faith is tested right now. Even in this church, you're being tested to see if you're really going to stand the test. If you're going to stand the test and be faithful to God and up to the challenge. Amen. 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 And you're going to have to be faithful in your commitment to God. Yes. Faithful to your commitment in your tithing and giving. Faithful to your commitment to God himself. Yes. Are you up for the challenge? I look for a man to stand in the gap and make up the head. God is looking for people oh, yeah. that will stand in the midst of the fire. Yeah, I'm closing. I know it's early as 20 to 12. I 
oldest son called me and he, for about two weeks now, he's been going through something and I tried to say, son, what is it? What can I help you with? What can I do? And he said to me yesterday with both of us, he said, Mama, I am so discouraged. He said, I cannot wait to get home where I can be around you and be with you. And I said, son, are you uh, feeling that overwhelmingness to go back to drinking? And he said, absolutely not, Mama. What words to hear? Absolutely not, Mama. I came up out of that stuff, and I'll never go back to that. Amen. He said, I came up out of that hop in, and I didn't even want to live, but God set me free from that. And so I just want to say to you that you might look like, and people might think that you're not facing anything. But I would dare say everybody in here in this house oh, yes. is under fire. Yes. But you must be strong in your faith. Oh, yes. And maintain that God is bigger than anything yes, you are, Father. Yes, you are, Father. Anything. Yes, you are, Lord. Ah, you are. Bigger than anything you're going. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, God, thank you that you are bigger than anything we're going through. And that you always are right there in the fire. You've not let us alone. You've not given up on us because we have given up ourselves. God, you haven't let us be there and not surround us with your presence. And I thank you for that, God. Thank you, Lord, that in the midst of the storms, you come walking and you prepare our hearts to receive one more time faith to bring us on through. When our faith is being tried, let us be faithful to you, Lord. Let us not turn away from you and follow you afar off, but stand in the midst of the fire and look and see you surrounding us and covering us in your mighty spirit. I thank you, Lord, and I bless you today. Just before I went into the hospital on Thursday, I was on Facebook. I got a message from a man. He said, Sister Braswell, have you heard about have you heard about the, the Brother Johns? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I know several Brother Johns. Who are you talking about? And they said, Brother Clyde Johns. And I said, no. They said, he died this morning. And I said, oh, God. I mean, I've been there with different revivals in the rain and Warner Robins. And, and uh, in fact, I was there two years ago. And uh, we were at Thanksgiving weekend. We went right on through Thanksgiving in revival. And I said, no, I, I didn't know it. He was one of the dearest friends. And even though I didn't get to be around him a lot, he was one of those dearest friends. And my heart was just so devastated to think that. You know, he woke up that morning and he was hurting. And his wife said, we're going to the hospital. And he went to the hospital and they done all the tests. They said, nothing wrong with your heart, nothing wrong. No, we, we can't find anything. And he goes back home and starts to change his clothes to get ready to go to the office at the church. And it's me in the restroom and his wife heard a thumb that went there and he had died. Hit his head on the bathtub but died of a heart attack. My heart was just so broken and I was trying to minister to his sons and daughters. Thank God. I, it's still unbelievable, unreal that Brother Johns was gone. And then the people of the church, they said, we're so devastated. Sister Bradford, what are we going to do without our pastor? He's been my pastor for 33 years like that. Others, 28 years. Some started putting on Facebook, I, I've only been here two years, but you're my pastor, and my, my son was delivered because of your love. And I just sit and wept. I wept and wept and wept until I couldn't weep no more. Just to think that, hey, he's gone. But then, then this is what I posted on there. He stood in his faith. No greater testimony could you have had. He stood in his faith. And they say, can you imagine Brother John's right now? 
He's done entered heaven and he's shouting. And, and he's running, they said. And in his meek spirit, they said, he's looking on the face of God. And I just broke again. Because, you know, he, he was a man of faith. And such a sweet, meek spirit. And there are loved ones that have gone home to the Lord and been through the fire for that and tested our faith. But what a great reunion is going to be when we get home. Amen. I mean, what a great reunion when we get home and see the Lord and we're able to shout and jump and laugh and run. And I mean, I can only imagine what we're going to do. I love that song. I can only imagine. Will I dance in His presence? Will I be still silent? What, what will I do? I don't know. But I believe we're going to have a hallelujah time because our faith our faith will bring us through. Stand with me. I have to read this to you just in case if you think it'll almost put you to shame. If you think that you've been through something, listen to this. By faith, you know, the Lord didn't have me bring that out, but by faith, Abraham had to sojourn from his family and home to a land he didn't even know about. I mean, just pack your tent and go, and I'll tell you when to stop. Now, that takes faith. Amen? Bless you. Amen? Some of you haven't moved, I can tell. So you, if the Lord says today, I want you to pack your stuff and go. And as you go, when you get there, I'll tell you. Can you imagine the chaotic mess we'd be in? Because we knew we were coming to Griffin when the Lord spoke that Wednesday in that Longhorns. And I had to wail Brother Brazel because I knew he heard what I said, that woman said. But he was such a homebody. And he won't go nowhere except Walmart and Food Depot now. And that's the essence of his journeys. And I'm saying, baby, we need to get out and go somewhere besides Walmart and Food Depot. I love the specials, he said. He's a great shopper. He gets the specials. But understand, pay the full price. Let's go to the mountains. Well, okay. But when the Lord said, we're coming to Griffin, and we drove into town. He looked at me and he said, doesn't it feel like, this is crazy, he said, but don't it feel like we've been here all our life? And I said, absolutely. A absolutely, I mean all of our lives. And he was cutting up with me because the old house we lived in, his lane bro, had sold. And he said, well, maybe we can buy it. I said, you might buy it, but I, this is my home up here. I ain't going back. I'm staying here. It's amazing. By faith, they sojourn. Listen to this. Through faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered to the child when she was past the age because she judged, because she judged him faithful, which had promised. Therefore, sprang is there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky and multitude, and as the sandwiches by the seashore, innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Listen to this. For they that said such things declared plainly that they seek a country, and truly if they had been mindful of that country, from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. But listen to this. It says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. And Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. And worship, leaning upon the top of the staff. By faith, Joseph, when dead, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his own. Now, I don't know if that would cause you to shout right there. But by faith, he said, I know 
that God is going to bring us out of Egypt. And when we come out of Egypt, I want you to carry my dead bones in the cave. That is such shouting stuff to me. I mean, that elevates faith. I mean, hey, we're coming out of Egypt, and when I die, and you come out, carry my bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. By faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction. I want to come on down here for just a minute. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. And they were going to pass for about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And he goes on to say, do I have time to tell you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah and all those who, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong, waxed valid in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead rage to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverances, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawed asunder. Were tempted. Were slain with the sword. They wandered in the wilderness in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in and these all, having retained, obtained a good report through faith. Through faith. Received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now have you been Saul Sutter? In prison? Tormented? And by faith, they have not even seen what you would die see. Your faith may be tested. But stay in the fire until God brings you out. Amen. I've done my best today, and I believe God outdone himself. I know he did, and I didn't, but I know he did. And that's all that's important, right? If you got this message this morning, that you may be tested. You may be in a trial. You may be discouraged. But faith under fire produces great fruit. Lord, I, I can't thank you enough for that, God. Because out of the fires of our lives and the trials of our life brings productive fruit. Fruit, God, that is spread around so everybody can taste and see that the Lord is good. Touch us, I pray, oh God, with that supernatural we will come forth victorious through the fire and stand on the other side and say, God, you were the one that gave me the victory to pass through the fire. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. All of us are always open. Always.